you mentioned that usually now the structure is public private. We aim to have more private companies going into the market alone without the government backing. There are so many issues there and there are so many opportunities as well. So um, the government needs to, again, uh, implement so many uh, legislations and rules to encourage uh, those investors to come in into the market. Uh, and it has actually. The government of Saudi Arabia has recently uh, uh, enacted a new legislation with this regard in order to bolster and to uh, develop the, the sector. Uh, this includes uh, the premium residency program. This includes the new system for selling and leasing off-plan real estate projects. Among these initiatives, um, which ones do you think holds the most potential uh, for attracting large-scale institutional investments or companies into the market? And what do you think other initiatives that could be uh, potentially implemented going forward? Let me start with the most tangible initiatives we are, we are witnessing today. It's the headquarters program. Every time I check the figures, I see that uh, the, the count is, is increasing. So my last check was 225 companies, regional headquarters moving to Riyadh. I believe if we check today, it might be 240 or 250. Actually, it was today one of the consultancy okay. firms opened the regional issue. Right. We can write about it in our news. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and this is driving demand and unlocking value. So I gave this example to show that it's not just about issuing regulations. It's about connecting the dots, uh, unlocking value. And uh, it's amazing how uh, the, the, the leadership, be it the government, the ministries, uh, the, the, the quasi-governmental companies, they're acknowledging the importance of interdisciplinary development and uh, connecting the initiatives to each other. Every time we think there's a missing link, after a few weeks or a few months, you find that it's been thought of. Uh, every time I hear a consultant uh, criticizing one aspect, less than three, four months, you see that it's happening. So here I'm referring to the dynamism. There's proactivity. Yes. Between what's needed and it's, what's actually being implemented. I think it's a real renaissance. That's why I trust what's happening. Okay. And although it sounds sometimes over ambitious, but then when you backtrack and you see what we have achieved in the last three, four, five years, you see that it's moving in the, in the right direction. Again, roadblocks are there, headwinds are there, uh, regional uh, geopolitics. This is all uh, a fact of life. That's how you deal with it. Now, if we go into some of the initiatives that you uh, listed. Let's focus a little bit about on the uh, residency program because there are so many people that are asking you and are asking me and are asking everyone about this. And who, how will this, how is actually this being implemented? Uh, are there any ambiguities in the law? And will this actually affect the residential uh, real estate market uh, in Saudi Arabia? Because this is where we are. This is why we're here. About, uh, and and again, it will have a ripple effect exactly. on other segments of the industry, obviously. But primarily, demand is still local. And this is good news, because it's less affected by the regional and international uh, headwinds. Uh, but recently, we're seeing lots of demand from expats that are residents in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I've launched a project since the beginning of this year. Almost 15% of the buyers are uh, experts that are residents. Some of them have been residing in, in Saudi for 10 or more years, so they call it home. But until very recently, they were not in a position to acquire. Actually, buy a house.